Now, before I get into my review of the holdovers, I do want to give a special thank you to Letterbox and Focus Features for sending me a special screening invite to check out this film. Now, The Holdovers is a 2023 film directed by Alexander Payne, who you may know directed such films as Election, About Schmidt, Sideways, The Descendants, Nebraska, and Downsizing. The movie also stars Paul Giamatti, Dominic Sessa, and Divine Joy Randolph. It tells the story, and it is set in 1970s, and follows Paul Hunnam, who is played by Paul Giamatti, who is a disliked teacher at Barton Academy, and he's responsible for supervising students who are unable to return home for the Christmas holiday, which then in turn they're called the holdovers. Uh, during this process, uh, Mr. Hunnam kind of is forced to deal with a one particular rebellious student by the name of Angus Tully, who kind of is grieving the loss of his father. Now, Angus is played by Dominic Sessa, and Divine Joy Randolph plays Mary the cook, or head chef, or head cook at Barton Academy, who recently just lost her son in the Vietnam War. The movie deals with loss, grief, sarcasm, and friendship in a very, very unique way that you wouldn't even think to imagine. The film is written by David Hemmingson, and let me tell you, the dialogue, the aspect of how this film works is really, really fun. The chemistry that all the actors have between one another makes this movie work in a lot of ways, especially with the holdovers that are being there, and then kind of hunt them, kind of falling into this job by watching these students because one of the other teachers that he works was kind of lied and didn't want to take this job during the Christmas holiday season and it was left to Hunnam and uh, Hunnam finds this out and he's like yeah sure I'll do it where else do I have to do and what else can I say um the dialogue is quick-witted and even flows very, very well between the conversations. When one character is talking, another character has a comeback. Or when it's quiet, you know, it's broken up with a good kind of sarcastic wit or mannerism that you wouldn't see to expect. Um, Alexander Payne's directing really shines in this film really, really well. I love the films he directs, and this is the second time that... Paul Giamatti and Alexander Payne have worked together, the other being Sideways, which was a big, big indie Oscar-nominated film. Now, uh, from his filmography, you kind of see that different aspects of his directing are really nuanced. He has the blocking in a way with certain characters in the mid-ground, foreground, and the background. You see that working really, really well, and especially how... You know, these characters during Christmas time are like, okay. And as, you know, the days go by, on the side of the screen you have December 17th, day one. And then you see how much kind of an asshole uh, Mr. Hunnam is because we all have that teacher or professor in high school or college who is such a hard ass on us, but doesn't care, just has to do his job in a way where, you know, he has to do certain things and, you know, and there's a scene where he gives back essays and we see that Angus passed with a B plus. Everybody else has a D minus or an F plus or a C plus and it just goes on and on. But the writing is really good and it's done really well. Not only that, we see Mary who is in and out of certain scenes but she kind of is still grieving the loss of her son and we see that through how she connects with Hunnam and Angus. And it's really, really heartfelt and touching. And mostly all the emotional scenes are with Mary. But she just gives a dynamic where she's alone and she's watching the newlywed game. We see Hunnam come in and join her. And they have like this back and forth of dialogue. And we get to know each character by the means of dialogue. And I absolutely love how that works in a film because we don't want to just give everything out in the beginning and we see the process of how every character develops in their own way. No, this screenplay and this directing is done in a way where through conversation we get to know who these people are, which should be done and which how it should be done in a film for that matter. This was a great film. There are a lot of laugh out loud moments, especially with the banter. And there are moments like, Oh, okay, that actually happened. And there are scenes where 
kind of Hunnam has to take Angus to a hospital because of something that happened. And all the while, things are going on. And in the end, they kind of connect in a way, in a very unique and positive way. We find out the actual truth about Angus's father. We find out the history of Mr. Hunnam. And then we find out what real aspect is how Mary has to, you know, kind of grieve on her own way about losing her son in the war. All the while, we see that in the background when Angus and Paul are going through in a liquor store, we hear the Vietnam War in the background about how many GIs died, this and that. It's the start of, you know, the Vietnam War. It's 1970, and pop culture references back then are there. And you see the cars, you see the setting, you see the design. Mr. Hunnam drinks Jim Beam. Angus wants that beer. Mary drinks her drink. It's done really, really well, which is very different and unique to see, but in a fun, fun way. There's not an ounce where this film doesn't, you know, hold your gaze. It always does because everything is happening one after another. The editing is great. It's very slow paced at times. If you don't like films like this, don't check it out. But if you do love films like this, if you do love Alexander Payne, if you do love writing, this is a film for you to check out. Now, as I stated, it's the second collaboration between Alexander Payne and Paul Giamatti. Now, in the way, Alexander Payne kind of conceived the film's concept after watching a 1930s French film and then contacted screenwriter David Hemmingson to write the screenplay, which was originally slated to be a writing sample for a television pilot, part of a television series. Now, could you imagine this film being a television series? No, for what this is, this film is perfect and great as a two-hour film. The film runs for 133 minutes long. It's a nice, easy pace. It had a limited theatrical release on October 27, 2023, and will have a nationwide release November 10th, 2023 by Focus Features. Now, the film, in my opinion, will be nominated for a few Oscars, and I'm thinking about maybe three or four. Uh, best Actor for Paul Giamatti, Best Supporting Actress for Divine Joy Randolph, Best Costume, and Best Original Screenplay for David Hemmingson. Um, I mean, I could see any of them winning, but it's going to be an interesting uh, aspect of, you know, will they be nominated? And if they won't, I'll be very, very surprised. The Holdovers is fun. It will make you laugh, cry, and will show you how friendships are formed and broken. And and in the end, when everything seems lost, there's some kind of way to knowing that there is more out there than what you really think when you're confined with someone you don't like. This is a very well-directed, written film. The acting is great. And Paul Giamatti it shines Dominic Sessa. Be on the lookout for him in Hollywood. He is an up-and-coming actor. And Divine Joy Randolph, who you may know from Only Murders in the Building as she's playing the detective, is going to be a big breakout star as well. For me, The Holdovers gets 5 out of 5 stars. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought about The Holdovers, directed by Alexander Payne and starring Paul Giamatti. Did you like it? Did you not like it? What did you think of it? What did you think about the aspect of the story, the pacing, the comedy, the uh, period drama that was in there, the aspect of the grief, the loss, certain things that happened and how it transpired. Who was your favorite character? Who was your least favorite character? And did you like the writing? And do you think more could have been done or was it just perfect for you? Let me know in the comment section below about all the questions I just asked. And also let me know what rating you would give the holdovers. And be sure you click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell for new review videos on my channel. I will see you all in the next review video. And once again, I do want to thank Letterbox and Focus Features for giving me a special invite to the special screening of The Holdovers. I will see you all in the next review video.